Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll do yet another problem from the topic of thin walled pressure vessels. Thin walled pressure vessels. I think this is the fifth or the fourth problem or fourth video in the series of lectures where we are solving different types of problems from this very important topic. So here we have a boiler. It is constructed of 8 mm thick steel plates and they are fastened at their ends as shown over here using a butt joint. So here we have two cover plates as shown over here and then we have rivets which are at a spacing of 50 mm. The boiler dimensions are given here. And internal pressure is 1.35 MPa. So as I usually say, you can pause the video, try to solve the problem on your own. So in part A of the problem, we have about three things to find out. The first thing to find out is the circumferential stress in the boiler's plate apart from the seam. So by seam, we are referring to this particular region over here. And they are asking us what will be the circumferential stress in the boiler plate apart from the seam. So when they are saying apart from the seam, they are referring to some place somewhere here. Like pretty much far away from the seam where these local effects don't come into play. Then they are asking us the circumferential stress in the outer cover plate along the rivet line AA. A is shown here. So this is the rivet line and they are asking us what will be the circumferential stress at these regions. These are the, this is the outer cover region. So what will be the shear stress at these points? So the question one, the part A of the problem was addressing to the circumferential stresses at point A while part B of the problem is asking us to find out the circumferential stresses in this region region b or question b now the third portion of the problem wherein you are asked to compute the shear stresses in the rivets okay so these are the three things so rivets are here so you are asked to compute the shear stress in the rivets make sense so that was a lot of introduction now let's get started so first of all the quick check compute the r by t ratio so in this case if i compute the r by t ratio it, it comes around 750 divided by 8 which is pretty pretty large compared to number 10 or in other words r by t ratio exceeds 10 so we can assume that or all the equations that are valid for a thin pressure vessel holds true in this scenario so that's a good green signal to go ahead so i think this is a good way when you have a long problem like this just to write down what are the given quantities it makes a lot of sense so thickness of the boiler plate is given thickness of the cover plate is given then you are provided with the rivet diameter rivet spacing radius of the boiler then internal pressure as well so these are the certain things that you are given so it's always better to list them in advance so that it will help your way through solving this problem so now the first question is pretty straightforward they are asking you to compute the hope stress so hope stress is given by this particular expression this holds true because we are talking about a thin walled pressure vessel and if you plug in all the numbers properly then finally you have a value of 126.56 MPa as the answer. Make sense? Okay, now let's proceed to the second part of the problem wherein you are asked to compute the shear stress, sorry not the shear stresses, the hoop stresses that will be coming at this region we have we computed the hoop stress in this region and now you are asked to compute the hoop stresses at this location okay 
just before working out the numbers can you pause this video for a while and have a guess where, what you think about the hoop stresses at that location whether it will be large compared to what it was over here or you think like it will be pretty much less compared to what it was at this region pause the video think over it for a while and then come back okay so the best way to go about solving all these problems is to draw the free body diagram so i'm taking a small chunk of mass from this region okay so here it is this is the side view and once you look at from the top it will be something like this so here you have 50 mm which is the spacing between the two rivets I actually I should have drawn it I should have drawn only the one half of the rivet oh, I made a mistake the apologies so it will be it, it will be something like this only half of the rivet will be seen okay make sense I think uh, see this is the bottom cover plate and this is the top cover plate and here in the middle we have the boiler plate boiler plate so these two are the cover plates the one in the blue are the cover plates and one in the yellow it it corresponds to the boiler plate okay so you are asked to compute the circumferential stresses in the cover plate so let's if you mark the external forces acting on the on this particular chunk of the mass there are hoop stresses there are hoop stresses at this location and in order to balance that particular force out there will be hoop stresses developed in the cover plates as well as shown over here okay makes sense you have a force acting in this direction so in order to balance that there should be a force in this direction as well it's not rocket science pretty straightforward so given that now what's the next step sum up the forces and say since this whole structure is an equilibrium since this whole structure is an equilibrium this chunk of mass this small chunk of mass also has to be in equilibrium so when i sum the forces in the hope direction it will come like this so by sigma hoop boiler I'm referring to the stress that is acting over here which we found out a while Lego okay and this is the sigma hoop in the cover plate make sense so I'm writing this equation hoop boiler times 50 times 8 where 50 corresponds to the width and 8 corresponds to the thickness is equal to there are two cover plates so that's why a 2 coming over here and I took 50 mm as the width and 8 mm as the thickness pause this video and just make sure whether this equation is correct or not in fact this equation is wrong because when I'm taking the stresses in the hoop cover this width is no longer 50 mm this width is only 40 mm so I made this mistake intentionally so as to make sure that when you do this kind of problems you won't make this mistake or you won't make a similar mistake okay so I need to change this also make sense then it will be it can be written as Sigma hoop cover the the hoop stresses in the cover plate will be 50 times 8 divided by 40 times 8 times 2 into the hoop stresses in the boiler plate far away from the scene 
so this will come around 5 by 8 so this will be 5 by 8 times of the sigma hoop in the boiler plate far away from the scene you have already evaluated this value this was coming around 126 MPA or 127 MPA so you can easily evaluate the hoop stresses in the cover make sense now let's move ha move ahead and see or solve for the part C in the problem so moving to the later part of the problem uh, we are asked to find out the shear stresses in the rivet and we know there is a force which is acting like this which is the hoop in the boiler plate so this is the boiler plate and these two are the cover plates these are two are the cover plates and we have our rivets like this apologies for my poor drawing but then the thing to be noticed here is how the load flows in actually so the load from the uh, boiler plate comes here it goes to to two of these rivets and through these rivets it goes to the cover plate and this place we have our other boiler plate also which comes into contact which i haven't drawn so that's how the load flows so they're asking us to compute the shear stress which is not pretty difficult to find out so this force is the force which needs to be transmitted and if this thing i have shown only the half of a rivet the other half is part of this portion of the chunk of the material so to carry this force first of all what is this force this force is this boil hoop stress in the boiler times the width times the thickness so 50 is this width and 80 is this thickness so that gives you the force acting on this section now what is the resistance area that resists this in shear so if i assume that my shear stress in the rivet is tau underscript rivet then the area resisting it will be pi by 4 dr squared times 2 why this 2 is coming into play very simple this particular rivet is in double shear by double shear i mean if this is your rivet then there is this area which is you have a force some there are two areas this one corresponds to this and this one corresponds to this okay so if i uh, if i push this then this will be the reaction forces this is the external force and this is the reaction force make sense so this force and this force will try to shear these two areas that's why i have a two over here now rest everything is simple now you plug in those values here and just plug and check then you will get the shear stress in the rivets as equal to 321 so what are the key takeaways from this particular problem the key takeaway is that once you compute the hoop stresses in the cover plate take only this area sorry this width which will be 40 mm when, uh, because this is 5 and this is 5 okay don't forget to take that and the other key takeaway is that these rivets since we are using two cover plates they are in double shear so you should always use a two here make sense so and the another takeaway is that free body diagrams always help thanks for watching